as December comes to a close, we all like to reflect on the year that was. For fans of comedian Liz Winstead, that means getting her no holds barred take on the hottest topics and trends. Liz is a stand up comic, co creator of The Daily Show, co founder of Air America, and started the nonprofit Abortion Access Front. Her New Year's Eve show, New Year's show, has become somewhat of a legendary tradition here in the Twin Cities. Yes, and we are so excited to welcome you back to the four. Thank you. And congratulations, because you said today is the 40th anniversary of getting into stand up. How did you celebrate? Did I say we could say that on the air? <laughs> I yes. feel like you're just like telling all. <laughs> uh, it feels very weird. I mean, it just. You, age, you just like us really fast, right? Mm -hmm. And when you think of the world and how wild it is, it's every year I do this show and I was like, oh, that happened this year? Oh, that spy balloon was this year? Oh my gosh. Cocaine bear was, was this year? <laughs> People forget cocaine bear. <laughs> Yeah, how could otherwise we? known as trying to pick a speaker of the house. But that's another thing <laughs> entirely, entirely, entirely. You know what's funny about your shows? They, they always have a, a, a funny name, a theme to them. Mm -hmm. So what is yep. the title this year? The title this year is 2023 and Me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's kind of like my own DNA. I'm going to be waxing on with some really fun stories of my 40 years in the in showbiz and then looking at the year. What else happened this year? Because Spy Balloon, I was like, oh my gosh. I know, right? I could have sworn that was 2022. I know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. The Supreme Court went off the rails. We know that, you know, politics are wild. But the thing I'm the most excited to talk about is this flag. flag oh gate. my gosh. I was looking through <laughs> some of the submissions and I was like, there was one flag where the loon looked like it worked in a brothel. It had like a weird choker. It like, it, like it, it was, very, it's hilarious. So, you know, that is always fun. I mean, the year is so much. I mean, our former president is in some legal troubles. I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. that if you're reporting on that at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we've had a lot of wildness with the state of abortion in America, what's happening and just like how Roe v. Wade has since it's fallen, what's happened there. So it's, it's an unending, hard as heck show to edit. And so I just, I panic at it. Like the last two weeks of December are just like, <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do 17 jokes about George Santos. I can only do three, right? That's too bad. I know. I mean, there are, there are many to give. And what? sometimes everybody needs the love and or the ridicule that but I work out. <laughs> At the same time, though, if fans are coming back to see you, you said 40 years. You're going to take a, maybe a little trip down memory lane for everybody, yeah. too? Yeah, and I know, yeah, I'm going to take a trip down memory lane. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell some stories I've never told before and sort of touch tone moments, some Daily Show stories, some early stand-up stories, some Air America stories. And then I know that my producer has something that I don't know that's happening. Mm -hmm. okay. So there'll be surprises even for me. So I think it's going to be a really good year to, to come to the show. Well, you're, you're talking about some pretty serious topics even though you you handle them lightly what is your comedic philosophy when you have to go in on the the more serious stuff well the serious stuff i always say when i pick my targets i like to punch up so it's like who is the bad guy in the situation um and sometimes people don't always agree and so part of the the tightrope is there's people that think you shouldn't address it anything at all mm -hmm. and i always feel like i'm willing to take the risk and have a take on almost anything because there's always an angle um, to every story, no matter how deeply dark you think it is. There's always some place to, um, to find light or shed light. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need this time of year. Very quickly, uh, we're almost done here, about 30 seconds. Last year, you said you had moved back to Minnesota. So you've been here now well over a year. So yeah, I live part of the time here, part of the time in Brooklyn. And it's the first time I've ever lived, owned a home. I have an apartment in New York yeah and um, I do a, I, I discovered next door mm. which <laughs> is uh, some kind of crazy Karen marketplace that is very <laughs> bizarre um, and uh, it's also a source of joy oh and gosh. wonderment yes oh. well yeah welcome to, to home ownership <laughs> in Minnesota I know yeah. There's There's lots of fun we're gonna to um, make you wonder if you were gonna actually be able to retire yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that's, that's how it works <laughs> Okay. Good Thank to you, see you. Liz. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. to have you out. Again, there's two nights of shows. Liz takes the stage at the Parkway Theater in Minneapolis. That's December 30th and the 31st at 7.30 p.m. Tickets starting at 50 bucks. There's 75 for a VIP meet and greet. More details on theparkwaytheater.com.